I really think it was a very mature performance. Um, we, we were there in the right moments, we, from first, especially the first goal was a was, um, really nice play and, and these kind of things. But we have to give credit to Watford and especially to Roy, we obviously um, made us some difficulties. We could have done better, definitely, but um, we, the, the, after um, being two weeks nearly not together and stuff like this, then the early kickoff, it's, it's, really, it's really tricky. I'm still annoyed about that penalty, really, because a penalty where there's no appeal from a Liverpool player Neither Jurgen or I see anything untoward that's gone on, you know, in the situation. All of a sudden, the game stopped, and we hear there's a VAR check, and we all look at each other, saying, "What do you mean a VAR check? You know, what, what are they checking? Surely that's not what VAR was meant to do, is it?" And it, it leaves a little bit of a bitter taste. We created some chances against them. There's no doubt that Liverpool must have felt they were in a game today. And with a bit more composure, you know, we might have even created more chances. If I'm on the pitch, I'm always um, able to, to find the, at least an opportunity to score. So it's up to me to, to stay focused and take uh, those chances. And, uh, well, I've been opening the score. Uh, that is always the hardest thing. And I'm really happy for that. And I hope I can keep doing that. And he's doing a brilliant job at Liverpool, no doubt about that. And I think it's fair to say that it wasn't one of Liverpool's best days, um, but you found three players that probably made sure they had the victory, which is the most important thing, particularly at this stage. Exactly. Season. After international break, it's all about the three points, but the three players, Thiago, Gomez and Yota, I did think they just added that extra quality when needed. Yeah. Um, the first pass you'll see from Thiago is absolutely sublime. Takes out three players with Where's a pass. Where's he going to do it? Where's he going to do it? I mean, how has he even seen that? It's, it's just extraordinary. I just hear first touch pass. Uh, defender does well to get back, and he was doing his defensive work. You know, stopping counter attacks. And Klopp here is, uh, you know, applauding him for his work. And then Gomez. This is the one that means the most to me, just because of his injury problems. He's so unlucky, hasn't he? I've been so getting the crucial injury, but it's a wonderful ball. It's an outstanding run from, from Yotta. Someone so small, timing of his run, excellent. But if you look at the quality of this ball from Gomez, it's, it's Trent-esque the way he's doing it. And this was another one he had. Cabezana does really well to get it right, but the technique to whip it round and put it on a sixpence, I just thought it was worth mentioning. But the man of the moment, uh, Yotta, like he said in his interview there, he always finds space to get a, a, a chance. He always seems to be in the right, the right place at the right time. He popped into little pockets, dribbling past a couple. Actually gets a little bit unlucky on this one. Another time, he could have um, <coughs> hurt him a little bit more. And then this is just his awareness again, popping in, and it's the weight of the ball to, to Manny. Ben Foster does well in, in the end, but I just thought them three today yeah. were, were outstanding. Is it, is it Jota or Yotta? Yotta, I thought it was Yotta, no? Jota? I've been saying Yotta. I've been saying Jota for about two years now. Oh really? So I, hope it's, I got no. told Yotta. No, maybe. Who knows? Whatever it is, we'll by find the way. out. He's a fantastic player. He, he really the is. The recruitment from Liverpool has been yeah. superb. I mean, his timing uh, in the air is magnificent. Yeah. He's been in the air. Another what was he? 40, 41 million pound. You don't have to be a giant again. to be good in the no, air, do you? All about it's timing. Right. No, you really don't. Um, Watford made life. Difficult for Liverpool. Oh, yeah, Liverpool uh, knew they were in a game. There was, there's but no you've got to take your it. chances. And when you create two very, very good opportunities like uh, like Watford did, the first one was uh, was Kuchka. Did very well to uh, to get there in the first place. But that high line that Liverpool play, they, they, Watford do it re work it really, really well. Yes, it's a good save. And that was it, nil-nil. And they go straight up the other end, Liverpool, and uh, and score um, less than a minute after uh, after that. So that is a key moment in the in the game. This was it, one nil. It was to make it one all. Lovely run from Saar. He, he looks up. He puts the into the path of Pedro. And again, when you're creating big, big yeah. opportunities like that at uh, at Anfield, you've got to punish them. And they didn't. So. They've only got themselves to blame because Liverpool didn't really play that well. Is this a Kuchka penalty for again you? on uh, on Jota? Yeah, it is a penalty. Yeah. I mean Roy Hodgson, I'm I'm sure when he sees the, that that angle there, VAR gets it correct. But that goes on every uh, every weekend. We see that. So let's hope they give that on a more consistent basis now. Oh, I mean Fabinho it. sticks it away superbly well. What a, what a penalty it is.
Yeah, fantastic stuff. Yeah. Um, so, how would Manchester City respond? They travelled to Burnley, another team in the relegation zone. Jonathan Pearce was at Turf Moor. OK, right, here we go. Title race. Uh, it's tight, very tight. Let's have a look at it. Um, and there are obvious comparisons with 2018-2019 when Manchester City and Liverpool went to the wire. Incredible. In fact, from this stage, they won their last eight games each, didn't they? And Manchester City won by a single point. That can't happen this time because, of course, next week, Manchester City play against Liverpool at the Etihad. Uh, Micah, <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel? Do you think City are going to hang on to it? Yeah. I, I two do, great sides. Just, just because uh, I, I think these are two of the, the best sides we've ever seen in, in the Premier League. And Man City, a couple of seasons ago, when you know they got 100 points, and Liverpool narrowly missing out by, by, point. Uh, by a point. Yeah. Uh, at that sort of numbers, you would win the Premier League. So yeah. we're two great teams, but I just feel yeah. Man City have the edge because the game next week is, is at the Etihad. And Liverpool have only won once in the last 10. The are you trying to jinx it? Or what, no, you, 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 point, no to... you told me that earlier. And <laughs> no, but I, I didn't want to say it on air. I know you didn't want to say it because you thought it would jinx it. <laughs> and now you're accusing me of trying okay, to jinx well, it. Well, I'm just giving you a fact. Well, facts are facts. <laughs> and I think Liverpool are obviously outstanding. <laughs> well, another that fact man. is I'm so surprised he thinks Man City are going to win it. <laughs> He's, he might jinx the it. The standard of football from these yeah. two... Yeah. Football clubs over the past few years has been ridiculous. So he's going for City, I'm going for Liverpool. Just because he's going for just City because or because you think it will be? Because yeah, he wants I'm to say the opposite he wants to him. Liverpool fans to like him, that's why. Uh. <laughs> Alan, why do you hate Manchester City? So? I don't know exactly. <laughs> Biased again. I'm not an ambassador for City, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on. So Liverpool went top of the table for the first time since December the 4th and... They actually weren't really at their very best, were they? But they got the job done. Well, that's how good Liverpool are. Even in probably third gear, they're, mm. too, they're too good for pretty much everyone. So they weren't vintage, but they didn't need to be. And, uh, you know, credit to this group of players. That's 10 on the bounce in the Premier League. You know, this is such a strong side. You have so many players that can hurt you. Joe Gomez, I thought, played really well today, put in a great cross for the goal. Jota's great in the air. All of a sudden, now they don't rely on that front three anymore with, with Jota and Diaz coming inside. The depth is there, so... But Thiago played well, but um, such a complete Liverpool side. They're, they really are special. They are special. And would you say, Martin, it's one of the strongest Liverpool squads that we've seen for a while? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Owners just mentioned half a dozen players, and you think, gosh, yeah, that's right. He's there, and he's there, he's there. Yeah. Coming up this, this particular weekend, I know this from a, from a managerial viewpoint, it's really worrying for Klopp because he's getting players back. They've been away in international duty. Their head's all about international football, you know, trying to qualify for the World Cup, things like this here. So he's getting the players back. I know he's not the only one, but he's getting his players back. They're playing Watford. The crowd are expecting to win this game. So it's getting their mindset, their mindset right. Some of those players might not have been arrived back on maybe until Thursday morning or something like this. He's got the game. And, and so he has to get those things right. So Owen mentioned it wasn't a vintage performance. And sometimes, actually, it doesn't take that. It just takes that, all the things that Owen has mentioned that make up Liverpool now to win the game. And Klopp, Klopp mentions that there, and that's right. They've got this great, great strength, great strength of character. And, um, and it had to show there today because they could have easily found themselves a goal behind. Then suddenly there's a wee bit of a worry. But they've taken it. They've got great players, they've got a good manager, a really good manager in charge, and they're making it interesting for us all. They certainly are. Let's see how they actually went ahead in the game. And this started with an Alisson save, didn't it? Yeah, but I think this is what Roy has. Obviously, he sets up, you know, defends and they set deep. But, they, you know, with that Liverpool high line, you know, Watford do great to get behind it. It's a fantastic save from Arsenal, it really is. And I think that's what Roy mentioned, you know, they, on another day they probably could have uh, caused a bit of trouble. But I think, I mean, this, what, this is what Thiago's all about there. Confident possession around the corner. And Joel Gomez getting into that Trent mm. Alexander-Arnold position. That's a great ball, isn't it, Martin? I, th I, I think he thought he was Trent Alexander there for a moment, you know, because the, um, I, I, I'm surprised. It's a really, really brilliant cross. And actually, I think there was a lot of slight concern over the fact that Trent wasn't available. I know he's back, he was back on the bench, wasn't he? But I think amongst the Liverpool supporters, there was that feeling of, OK, how, how will Gomez slot back into that right-back position? Mm. But he was probably one of their best players today. He was. And I think as well, Jota's, you know, really underrated in the air. He's fantastic in the air, getting on the end of it. Um, 
And the thing is as well, you know, if you if you make a few mistakes like Kuchka does there, I mean, I don't know why rugby tackles Jota in the box. They did nothing, they saw it, and then go to VAR and look there, that's going to be so easy yeah. for them to be able to give um, every time they go to the monitor, they have a look. But I'll tell you what, Fabinho's a fantastic penalty taker. Yeah, you mentioned that. He, he certainly is. He certainly is cool. I, I'm not so sure. And you can see what it means to Klopp here. This, this is a goal. This is against Watford at home. This is the second goal. And he's cheering that on like you, you wouldn't believe. So the game meant so much to Liverpool because they had to, they had to win. They had to win. And they did it. They did it. They might not have done it in the style they're accustomed to, but they've won. That's at this stage. Well, sorry, at any stage, winning <laughs> is the winning is everything. Yeah, and I can imagine as as a manager, when you start this run up until you know the end of the season, we're in the business end of the season. Every game matters for Liverpool. To start it with a win is yeah. so important. Well, there's a great thing now. You can totally concentrate on it. Your season, your club season's there, so you don't have to worry about those players disappearing off again for a couple of weeks. So they're in, totally in your hands now, and you feel as if that's gone. Right. We've won here now. Now we can, let's concentrate because it's a heavy programme ahead of them. And also, you mentioned the heavy programme. It's Benfica on Tuesday night in the Champions League. They have got such an important week coming up because at the end of it, it's the game mm. against Manchester City. This is a huge week for Liverpool Football Club. It is, but I think when you play at this level, every week is huge. And I think, look, they're a great team with a great coach, great players. Their greatest strength, in my opinion, is their mentality. And that shows through every time they play. They might lose a game, they, you know, they might not win, they might play poorly, but the mentality's there every time. You know, and I think that's their, that's their greatest attribute. And that's why they win trophies, and that's why they'll be right there at the end of the season for the Premier League, the Champions League. They'll be up for every trophy because they compete. Even they didn't play the best today, but the mentality allows them to be one of the best teams, not only in this league, but in, in the world of football. How many trophies do you think they'll walk away with this season then, Martin? I have no idea, <laughs> really no idea, because they're, they're up against Manchester City. They They've are. got them in the, um, in the semi-final as well, too, of the, uh, of the FA Cup. Both are still uh, vying for the big one, the big Champions League, both going again. I have no idea. You have no idea, no one has any idea, mm. because actually the story changes every week, doesn't it? But one thing that Liverpool have provided is an incredible title race this season, because at one point they were, what, 14 points off of Manchester City, and now they've closed that gap. I mean, today they went top of the table. It's remarkable how they've turned it around. Well, again, it goes back to that mentality. You would have thought the, the Premier League was out of sight. You know, I don't think any of us really mm. thought, I thought the race was over, really, and to be 12, what, 12 points behind in, in January to now be... Yeah. Ahead, you know, for for a little spell is is, is really amazing. So, uh, credit to them that they've they mm. made this a title race. And I think, look, I think they'll win one or two when this season's over. Just no the question is which one is it going to be? Which ones will it be? That is indeed the question. So Liverpool went top of the table, but of course it wasn't too long until Manchester City were up against Burnley. Yeah, it's tough because uh, they have a certain type uh, of playing um, and uh, I think they are always physical, always um, you need to be prepared for the long balls, you know, um, they have a tall, tall striker, so it's about uh, the second balls winning them and uh, and yeah, and uh, try to create chances and, uh, and score goals and uh, yeah, the pitch was a bit dry also today, that uh, didn't help our game so much, especially in the second half but I think, uh, yeah, it was very important to score the first one and then uh, uh, it made it easier for us. Listen, I said in press conference last uh, yesterday, so when you arrive in April, May, challenging to relieve the titles is because you have done an incredible uh, season. The big clubs, the men arrive at the end, it chances. After you win or win, can happen because because the opponents are good too. So and we have to accept it. But being here is because we work a lot. And the credit is after five seasons doing that, every single season. And when that's happened, there's a lot of credit for all organization that that we have. And and we're gonna fight. We're gonna fight. Uh, uh, the opponent is so tough but it's so good but uh, they said we're going to make a proper battle. OK, we accept it. We're going to make a proper battle too. And Burnley certainly won't be judging their season based on a result against Manchester City. What is interesting, though, is that top two in the Premier League. So Man City went second temporarily, but they've just showed their mentality. Once again, used the word mentality a couple of times to describe Liverpool. But Man City are no different. And it didn't phase them at all that they went second because within five minutes they went top again. 
No, but I think that some teams don't worry about anybody else. You know, they're so focused on their game. It's so fine-tuned from, from the manager, from the players. Everybody knows their role. Even when they lose, if they're unfortunate to lose, they don't really play poorly, Liverpool and Man City, anymore. You know, somebody makes a mistake, give away a penalty, ref makes a bad decision, or somebody scores a worldly. You rarely ever see either of these two teams play poorly. And, and that's a real testament to, to the coaches and the players. Yeah, you, you've got one eye on Liverpool, but I think they're more worried. They know if they play their game, their best game, they win the game, you know, 90, 95 times out of 100. It's quite scary to think, though, the standard of football mm. that both of these teams are playing. They're just pushing each other every single week to get better and better. It's, re it's been remarkable to watch. It has, just not this season as well, too, but the season that they were split by, by hair's breadth or something like this here. It's been terrific stuff. They've got really good players at the disposal, really good managers as well, too. And, um, and you've mentioned that they're on about, about the mentality. That's, but I think, I honestly don't think that you can win big titles or leagues that there, if you didn't have a strong mentality. You might be able to fluke a game or two or something that gets along the way, you know, and you might actually be able to fluke into the semi-finals of some competition. You might be able to do that. But to have the mentality, to have that strength of character throughout, and they create. The two teams create, you know, this is, you know, when they play three or four uh, passes backwards, you feel as if something's actually, they're playing it for a purpose. Whereas a lot of teams in the Premier League are playing the ball back, backwards because that's expected of them now to try and keep possession of the ball. But you feel as if Liverpool and Man City are playing, there's something behind what they're going to do. Man City, Man City can do you by, say, the little one-twos around the penalty area, so they don't need the big centre forward. But Liverpool, Liverpool can, can do that, but Liverpool also overpower you as well. You feel as if they've got unbelievable strength of the team. Manny is one of my favourite players. I love him. I, love, I really do I think he's a fantastic player. And he plays every single week. Every week. This is the point. So it's great. It's great to have it. It's really great for the, for the Premier League to have two teams as outstanding as they are. Yeah, absolutely well said. And from now until the end of the season, every single fan is watching their every single move to see where will either slip up? Will both teams win all their games to the end of the season? Well, of course, they play each other and it starts next week. So that's going to be a huge, huge match, which determines what might happen. I mean, it'd be great if we could have them play the final game of the season, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> when you look at yeah. all the other fixtures, you'd think they probably, you know, you'd think, I know on paper and it never works out like yeah, this yeah, month, absolutely. but you'd think, oh, they'll beat them. You know, the mm. City will beat Brighton yeah. and Watford and Leeds and Newcastle, West Ham. Um, but obviously that game coming up uh, next you week, know, you, that's huge. You could, nearly, you could nearly make that assumption if that's all they were playing for them, but they're also involved, heavily involved in the Champions exactly, League. And that's, yeah. that's the holy grail for them as well, particularly Manchester City, who have not done it yet, you know? Yes. And, uh, and they I, really want the Champions League, don't they? They really do, absolutely. They really do. And it's interesting, when you look at Liverpool's run, after City, they have Manchester United, which is always a difficult fixture because there's so much history between the two. And then the Merseyside derby. I know Everton aren't what... They have been and they're struggling, but every team there has something to play for. You're right, and obviously the, Liverpool have the harder fixtures, and especially the next, you know, the next three, the next four. After that, they have a relatively easy finish. But you know, the, the title race will be decided for Liverpool probably in the next four games for them. I think for, for City, it's hard to see them dropping points really anywhere. I know Palace has sprung a surprise, but. If they play normal City, they, you know, they pretty much beat all those teams quite comfortably. How do you think both managers now, from now until the end of the season, manage these players? Because it's so important. I, I, you know what? I actually think... Managing them in what way? What, what way do you mean? I mean, just in terms of making sure that they stay focused and that they are... Oh, I, I, you know track. what? I, I think that's easy. If, if, this, if we were talking about a team that this was the first year that they were actually competing strongly with it, I could understand that totally. About, gosh, you've got to concentrate here. Don't do... Please stay in tonight. Don't go out. These boys have been doing it for year after year. So I think that's the easiest thing in the world for the manager of these particular that's teams I'm thing. talking about to get them focused. I, absolutely. You know, I, that's, that's why they're brilliant players. That is really, that's one of the reasons. They're not only do they have the ability, but they also have the mentality. They, it's there for them. So, I, you know what? I, yeah. Easy, <laughs> easy, easy, absolutely easy. It's the injuries that would concern you. It's those particular things that might, might crop up. So, 
won't mention it. Something will happen. You know, they might lose a game because you're not, and not expected to lose the match because something happened. But it won't be because they're, they're, they have dropped incredibly below their own standards. They're there, they're there for a reason. And they've been there the year before and they've been there the year before that. That's why I think the manager's job here, he's created this thing. They, the two managers, have created this. But now it's flowing for them. And it's a matter of just... It's just uh, keeping an eye on them, that's all. But and no, it'll, it'll be fascinating, won't it, to see it all unfold as the weeks roll by until the end of the season. Right, it's time for a break.